right, everybody, welcome in to another episode of The Last I Heard. We're getting into having some student interviews after starting with the coaches. And here today with me is Kofi Hope Gund. He will be a senior next year, member of the men's soccer team. Kofi, thanks for doing this. Thanks for coming on. How's everything going? Well, good, man. Thank you for inviting me on. I'm excited to 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 join the join the kind of the pod. Yeah, uh, I've been home. Took the semester off and hope that we'll have a season. Yep. 2021. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. I mean, you know, I talked to Garrett Day last night and he was sort of in the same boat with hoping that he could play another year at Amherst. You know, what kind of went into that decision when you were thinking about it? Did you talk to Coach Serpone? What were those conversations like? Well, it was late spring when we were kind of like it was dawning on on the entire team and especially the the rising seniors, my class, that yeah. it wasn't was gonna happen yeah. next fall. Like the season had no real chance of 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 going underway. So slowly, as most of the seniors told coach that we wanted to have one more season. Yeah. It ended up that all eight of us, or now all seven of us, decided to to take the semester completely off and then we'll make our individual decisions regarding the spring. Yeah. Having that in place gives us like a guarantee that we'll be able to compete again next year. Yeah, yeah. And after last year, I gotta imagine you still got still got that feeling of wanting to play soccer again. I mean, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Losing losing the national final, like you have so much hunger still left. Yeah. Especially with having the season canceled this year, like that hunger only doubles. Yeah. So, yeah. Going into next year, it's going to be, it'll be a real drive to try and get back, not only get back to where we got, but try and finish that last day. Yeah, absolutely. So, so what have you been up to at home? I know we just talked about it a little bit, but let the people know what's going on. I've actually been studying for the LSAT, which I'm going to take on January 16th. Um, and I started studying around September. Um, but along with that, just also to, to make sure I don't drive myself crazy. I've been doing some deliveries with Postmates in and around the city. I have my bike and my little Postmates bag, pick up food. And it's a good, it's a good kind of balance with studying, which is just kind of just sitting down and, and reading textbooks. Yeah. It's biking gets, gives me a good opportunity to get some exercise in and yeah. make walks on the side as well. Yeah, that's good. I mean, it's gotta gotta feel a little bit like taking virtual classes. I know we uh, we were in a class together at the end of last year, sitting down and studying and grinding. Um, it's gotta feel a little bit like you're back at Amherst. Yeah, I missed the class. It was a good class. Yeah, poetry with friends. A little shout out for poetry with friends. What are you missing most about Amherst, the community, the town, and obviously specifically campus? Um, I'd have to start off by saying the team, like it's been like extremely difficult for all of us to be a part. One of the reasons we were so good last year is that we're a really close knit group and that goes for yeah. every class from the freshmen to the seniors and being a part for this long has been tough. Um, but along with that, the people, the place like so Amherst in the fall is gorgeous and being the city like obviously it's, it's not bad but it's yeah. not beautiful like Amherst in the fall and missing that a lot and then along with that basketball the scores table you worked out with me and it's, yeah. it, I, in this winter and spring I just look forward to that so much it's not only does it fill a hole that the season not having a season in the spring but it's you get front row seats to every single basketball game. Yeah. That's there's there's nothing better. Yeah, nothing better. I and mean, we we worked a lot of games together, and I had, as I said, Garrett on last night, and kind of reliving the college basketball feeling. It's uh, definitely something we're all gonna miss. Along with that too, though, I am ball. <laughs> I, mean, I played basketball throughout high school, but yeah. going going to Amherst, I kind of realized that. I wanted to be the other, so I didn't play, but I am ball. 
Bills that and we played together on that on those teams as well. Yeah, yeah. It's kind of it's kind of those small things that you uh, you miss just even though we're just kind of showing up at a gym, just getting to play basketball together is, you know, it was definitely like, times I'm going to remember. Yeah. Like 10 p.m. starts, just yeah. fin finishing some work, eating, and then saying, oh, I'm going to head over to the gym. And then I mean, you can't, like, I miss that like, so, so much. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Those are some good times. Do you, do you have any plan to get back to campus? I know. Uh, you were extending the invite, seniors were extending the invite for next semester. Do you know kind of what the plan is? Um, so when they sent out that form, there was like two, obviously there's two options, but for the people who declared that they wanted to study, there's remote and return to campus. But with saying, if you chose remote, you had to stick to that decision no matter yeah. what. So me and a bunch of my friends, um, we decided to just declare, yeah, we're, we're returning, but we're going to try and look at uh, places to live in either like the Carolinas or South, yeah. South California, because we want to be able to train together. Yeah. Especially a couple of the soccer guys in this group and being being somewhere warm during the winter months will be, will be important for that. And yeah. living together would be nice because as far as the fall goes, I've just been home. Yeah. And how does, how does it look training, I guess, in a virtual setting, right? You're all, soccer is not a sport that you can, like golf, you can, I can still kind of play, but being away from each other, it's, it's got to be tough as Coach Serpone and, and Matt kind of giving you guys some stuff to work on. I mean, we have like our, our fitness, like books and, and yeah. like booklets and stuff like that, that we try to keep up with, but I think they realized that having the season canceled motivation would be low to to try and keep fitness up but as far as i like i know like most of the like a couple of my teammates are in the uk now a couple of them have dual citizenship there and mm -hmm. they've been playing um i have friends here in the city and before like before it got much colder like it is now we've been we would be out to pier 40 and play a bit on the river every morning so i think Everybody's kind of figuring out a way to keep touching the ball just because can't really live without it. But yeah. like it's 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 been hard not to be able to train with my actual teammates. Yeah, especially coming off the of last season, I'd imagine. I want to get into that a little bit because I'm sure it's it's you know nice to think about um, with the run that you guys went on. You touched on it a little bit. What do you think was so special about that team? And I guess. Maybe to, to morph the question a little bit, making the deep run in the SCAX and the NCAA tournament, was there sort of a, a flip that switched? Like, okay, we're out of the regular season. Now it's time. It's, it's do or die. Oh, I mean, this, we just didn't, we didn't ever accept loss. Like one of the craziest aspects of that season was our first loss came in the NSCAC tournament to yeah. mid and talk about like firing something up, like firing a team up yeah. undefeated during the regular season and then losing a game you shouldn't have lost in yeah. the NESCAC tournament, which my class rising seniors have never won a NESCAC. Yeah. Amherst has been battling for those and been at the top of those for quite a while now. So yeah. that kind of, I think, set the, set, set the team going for it in, into that NCAA tournament. And that's why we had the run we had um another thing that kind of i wouldn't say was the driving force but there's different aspects of our team that allowed us to play different roles really effectively yeah i think having a small senior class can be looked at as a weakness sometimes but i mean there's four of them there's color jimmy will and dane and yeah. all like class acts human beings and great people but having a small senior class would allow them to all take leadership roles. Yeah. And that reflected so well on the sophomores, the freshmen, even our class. And part of that was having a solo captain. Cutler is one of the mo like, most hardworking players I've ever played with in my life. And he set an incredibly high standard for everybody on the field every day. Yeah. Um, 
and like moving on to our class, it was special to have a back line that was all juniors yeah. we were playing together for a couple of years then it was. And they kind of, they had a chemistry yeah. that was very difficult to replicate. Not that you can't replicate it if you're of a back line of different classes, but they all knew each other and that was, that was pretty special. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And I know probably a tough question, but is there one specific moment that you could pick out as what you remember the most or look the most fondly on from last year? I wouldn't say a moment, but instead a game. Okay. Our NCAA quarterfinal game against RPI mm-hmm. was kind of a classic Amherst display. It was yeah. raining, it's about like 37, 38 degrees. Yeah. So it was a pretty cold day. And we were just so raring to go. We were happy to be there. Yeah. Like it's kind of what Sir Cole loves. RPI came up to our field, to our field, it's super wet. And they obviously didn't want to be there. And as soon as we saw them and the energy they were had warming up, it was, let's go out and end this game. Yeah. And it was, it was a crazy game because it started in the grass field and then slowly as they realized they can contend with, contend with us there, <laughs> they, they, they asked to switch to uh, gooding the turf field. Yeah, I remember that, yeah. Then when we went down there, we still, still, they scored, but we still got the result 3-1. Yeah. Just, I'd never felt so warm and energetic on yeah. a free day. Yeah, yeah. And how, how much of an advantage do you think that grass field is for you guys? I know Serpone, I talked to him a little bit about it, but a, a lot of NESCAC teams, I had a friend who played at Bates. He, it's kind of an iconic place to play in the NESCAC at this point. Oh, yeah, yeah. Hitch, hitch. So is is a scary name for a lot of the teams, and they know whenever they 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 come down to to Western Mass, it's going to be a battle. Yeah, one of the biggest things about playing at Hitch is it's not the biggest field either. Yeah. So every game, they know we're going to be pressing yeah. all of them. Not going to we're not going to give them a second to to put the ball down and play, and Hitch won't give them that uh luxury either because yeah. it's a grass field that has a lot of <laughs> imperfections but it <laughs> kind of kind of works for for our benefit yeah for sure so when i talked to sapone about last season and when he was on with coach mills a couple episodes ago he i asked him the same question what moment and he said herman's goal in against tufts right off the start what do you remember about that moment i mean that's as far as long as I've been at the school, that's Tufts have been our biggest rival. Like obviously it's Williams and Amherst, but yeah. Tufts have had a better team than Williams over the last couple of years. And that game was a classic game between two of the contenders for the national title. And they came in and played a really good game. We played, I think one of our best games of the year. And then going into OT, we knew like, we don't want to let this go let it become a draw in our standings and i mean i just remember being shell shocked because every, like they kicked off it was like six seconds so herman like i don't know how he did it but one of the best center backs we played against at least my class i played against Biagio, uh paletta i think that's his name herman like had him on the floor and the keeper was just lo- it's just an unbelievable goal it's just, perfect blitz nobody expected it and the celebrations were just insane with the fans yeah. it, was a, it was a crazy moment yeah that was he was coach mills was making fun of him saying that he worked with her mom on each individual move that went into that little run so gotta got <laughs> laugh out of that um my last question on the soccer front i asked garrett a similar question last night say someone is coming to visit, take their recruiting visit to Amherst and they ask you what makes Amherst special? What makes the Amherst soccer program special? Why should I come here and, and play for coach Serpone? What do you tell them? Well, I'd be remiss not to focus on coach. Yeah. Because I 
haven't had many better role models in my life that care about people's character, people's ability to lead. And coming in as from high school, you're not, you never know what's going on as yeah. you're still a kid. And Serpone will heap responsibility on your shoulders and yeah. make sure that seniors hold freshmen accountable and freshmen hold seniors accountable. And being able to replicate that standard year after year after year is something that Serpone is incredible at. Yeah. And he's not only a great coach, but he is a great human being because he builds all of us into better human beings. Yeah. And I mean, obviously, thinking about Amherst, yeah, why wouldn't you want to go to a school with such great academics and such yeah. a great team culture? Yeah. The reason why Coach is just the best at what he does, he fosters such in a recognizable team culture yeah. around it, like around enjoying adversity, hardship, like enjoying the hard days, yeah. like that, that kind of thing. And you don't really get that everywhere. I think there are a lot of places where kids like to get stuff easy. Yeah. And I mean, Sir Poe will never let anything easy happen. Yeah. I think that's a big reason why he has the success he has and our program has the success it has. First one is the usual first one. Mount Rushmore of Amherst restaurants. If you had to put four up there, you don't have to make definitive cuts right now, but what would be on the list? So I'm going to go with our, our kind of, so the soccer, we call this the soccer team sponsor because we have home games on Friday or Saturday nights. We'll eat at Pasta Basta. Yeah. And they know us because we go like every time we have a home game. <laughs> We eat the same exact table and we put in our orders early and everybody kind of has a good time before game day. So that's got to be in there. Yeah. Um, my go-to when any of my family visits is Miss Saigon. Yeah. Big fried rice fan. So I can't, can't leave that off the list. Yeah. <sighs> Last two are hard. Yeah. It's just easy for me because they're always the front of my brain, but I think Bueno Isano is an underrated spot. Yeah. Chipotle is like, everybody knows and loves Chipotle. And there, we have one in Hadley, but Bueno yeah. is walking distance. And it might be a hot take, but I think their burritos are better than Chipotle. I think a lot of people would agree with you there. Um, so bueno, bueno will be the third. And then holding up the rear is going to be one that's not really an Amherst, but. Cushman's is oh yeah, a real great go to on a lazy Sunday. Yeah, um, it can be busy sometimes, but the food is great and the area is beautiful. Yes, yeah, that's one of my absolute favorite spots, Cushman, and and you're the first to put it on the Mount Rushmore, so I appreciate that. I've been repping Cushman since day one. That place is that place is special. Um, it is. And as as I always say, my PSA: if you can. Go out and support Amherst restaurants. Please do. They're going through a tough time right now, having to adapt everything to, to COVID guidelines. So um, as I say, I know you and I's college experience would, would not be the same without the town of Amherst and, and getting to eat at all those places. So support local business if you can. Um, all right, next one. Go to slice at Antonio's. I got to say regular in I, I'm just like being from the city. My standard for yeah. pizza slice is pretty high. Yeah, that's why I asked the question. Antonio's is great pizza, but I just don't think any of their special slices make the cut for me. But yeah. they're, they're plain slice. I actually really enjoy. Yeah. Or, or, or I get the hot cheese. Yeah, uh, hot cheese. Hot cheese pie. And just, yeah eat it over two days <laughs> yeah that's a, that's a great play that's we used to go to that one a lot all right this one's one of my favorites and it could be a hike an attraction um really restaurants you can throw in there the best hidden gem in the pioneer valley some place that a lot of people might not know about some place that you might have found throughout your years in amherst 
I'm going to say the railroad. Really? I've had some really nice hikes with friends. Like it's hard to do it in season, but yeah, in the season, like get an unusually warm day in yeah. February or March, go out. And it's nice to just spend a day on the railroad and it, there, it intersects with the bike path at certain spots too. So you're able to kind of navigate that. And then it goes back towards kind of the bottom of Amherst near Hills and you can hop back off and come back onto campus. But yeah. I think the railroad and the bike path would be up there. Favorite class at Amherst College? I actually really enjoyed, and it's unfortunate because I took this class last spring. It was called Reading Politics, and it was a poli sci seminar, just kind of about interpreting media, working with media, researching through, and more of a focus on news media rather than social media. But um, I really love the professor, uh, Pavel Machalo, give him a little shout out. Um, and it was just unfortunate that we couldn't finish that class in person because it was as, as far as seminar go, as seminars go, like it never felt like a long class. And it was like two to three hours every day or every. All right. That's the end of the rapid fire section. Um, as always, you win nothing, but thank you for, uh, thank you for competing. Um, all right, we're going to go on to the last topic here. Um, I know you're very passionate about diversity issues on campus and, and social and racial justice. Um, Amherst is obviously a place that's kind of on the forefront. Um, there's been a lot of, a lot of talk on campus and off um, about diversifying teams to make the teams reflect the student body and how diverse we are. Um, what do you think? I mean, I just kind of want to give you the floor to talk about it, but Obviously, the soccer team is extremely diverse. Um, how do you think that adds to everything? And from an athletics perspective at large, you know, what impact do you see on campus? Yeah, I think diversity within teams is one of the most important aspects of allowing kids within those teams to grow. I think you have people from different backgrounds, different ethnicities, different upbringings, you get you get a kind of proximity with a team where the love is always gonna be there, mm-hmm. where kind of the respect and mutual admiration is always gonna be present. Um, and that allows the proximity of being on a team, that, like that, that proximity allows people to, to learn and to grow and to to ask hard questions. Um, I think this has been kind of being a part for this long on our team. It's hurt us because we have all never really shied away from having those discussions about racial justice, about social justice. Obviously they're even more on the forefront now, which is difficult because it's like trains moving in two opposite directions. It's on the forefront. However, because we're not together, we can't all gather as a group and really have heart to hearts where the personal proximity is allows the emotion to come to to the forefront. Yeah. Um, as far as why diversity on teams is important is when you have one person on a one person of color on a team, the the negative aspects of that the feeling lonely or isolated can be really difficult, especially given if like during a season you have so much on your mind that you can't, you can't really navigate between all the things you have to do and still feel comfortable within a space where nobody else looks like you. And I think that, I mean, I think that's why our team was so successful last year and Supone's teams have been successful in the past because he, he understands this and he knows that when, when you bring people together and people learn from each other, there's more potential there for, for, for growth and success as a result. Yeah, that's well put. And 
I know, you know, it has been tough sort of being away from each other to have the conversations. A lot of the coaches I've talked to have said that, you know, they're trying to do Zoom meetings and, and have the conversations. It's not the same as it would be on campus, but just sort of as a larger question, um, and obviously bringing it to Amherst is not the end all be all of the conversation, but what do you think learning from this summer and the murder of George Floyd and all the conversations that are being had, what do you think can be brought to Amherst and how do you think the campus can grow from those conversations as a whole? I think most importantly, people have to take it upon themselves. Individuals have to take it upon themselves to, to do the work and to understand why certain things are the way they are and certain systems of oppression occur and exist in the way that they do. Um, how it could bring, how it could come to Amherst. Uh, I, Serpone has actually started a, uh, an, an alumni book club for, for like a Black Lives Matter book club. That's been pretty cool. And he's facilitated a lot of the kinds of conversations we're talking about with like really good groups of people who he's coached and as I've kind of mentioned before, molded into people who are cognizant that people are different, people can change, all these important aspects of understanding and allowing the world around us to, to teach us lessons as far as these, these like this racial social justice stuff goes. Mm -hmm. um, I think returning to Amherst, it'll be important to, not to, and I think this is one of the more difficult aspects of all this is trying to not push people in directions you want them to go, but understanding others and seeing that not everybody's gonna be the same and the way we all interpret our all differing realities is 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 there's no wrong or right with regard to that it's just, you have to hope that when people are close and have relationships with each other they trust each other that there is a way to communicate ideas and and i don't know solutions to to the problems we see and I mean, it's difficult because it takes a lot of patience and tolerance to say, hey, we're different, but that's okay. And it's not my responsibility to, or it's not my responsibility to change you. It's not your responsibility to change me. It's just our responsibility to listen to each other and to try and see where we're coming from because nobody is the villain of their own story. And we should all just try and, take in our realities as kind of as empathetically as possible. And I yeah. think that's, that's an important piece of it. Yeah. And you mentioned the last, last question I'll have here that you mentioned Kurt coach Chapone's book club. Um, is there anything specifically you read this summer or, or even up till now um, that you thought sort of broke things down and, and helped you think about, I know I read a lot of stuff, trying to educate myself as much as possible, but um, I'm interested to hear kind of what was on, on your reading list. Um, I'm not, this, I don't know if this was included on the reading list, but this is a book that my brother read this spring and summer and that I've just started and it's called The New Jim Crow by Michelle Alexander. And mm -hmm. it's, it looks at the prison industrial complex in a similar way to like other works, but like focusing and kind of portraying it in relationship with the Jim Crow era is I think a vital piece of the awareness she's trying to spread because one of the more difficult aspects of teaching and allowing people to learn about the history of social justice in this country is that we try to separate the years as far as possible and to try to kind of ignore aspects of our past that are much more recent than we would like to think. And 
the way in which she focuses it allows that to be proximate and allows it to be fresh. And because the prison industrial complex is in a way an extension of slavery, she's able to use Jim Crow as a bit of a kind of bridge between the two. And I'm not, I mean, I'm not done with it yet, but it's, yeah. it's a great book and I would recommend it to anybody to read yeah. that. Well, I appreciate your willingness to talk about this stuff. And obviously it, it's hard through a Zoom to kind of get something that's all encompassing, but I appreciate yeah. your willingness and your eloquence on that stuff. So um, I think we'll end it there. That's kind of all I had for you. Um, we miss you on campus. And I miss getting to see you every day, but um, thanks for coming on and, and taking the time. Um, and, you know, I, I hope you stay safe and healthy and, and have a happy Thanksgiving as we uh, move towards the holiday season here. Of course. Thank you so much for having me on. Same goes to you. Hope you're safe and safe and healthy and hope everything at school is, is, is going well. Yeah. Yeah. As, uh, as a lot of people are saying now, the only way is through. So stuff like this that keeps us together. So we'll keep doing it. All right. Thanks, Kobe. I appreciate it. Of course.